Hi, this is Happy Bird from happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com and today I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful faux icy gemstone uh, pendants. You can turn these into necklaces or lightweight purse charms and these are extremely lightweight. I made these out of cards. You can also use um, a poster board and all of the charms here are acrylic. So I hope you stay tuned because I'll show you how to do these. Uh, they're very, very easy to put together. They just require a little patience for the drying time. And before we get into um, the charms or the pendants, I'd like to ask you to visit my friend Carol Tolson. She just started a brand new YouTube channel and it is called Refunction Crafts. And Carol also owns an Etsy store called Refunction Crafts. And she puts up the most gorgeous items that she has blinged out. And um, I'd really like for you to stop by her channel and subscribe and let her know Happy Bird sent you. And if you have a chance, check out her Etsy channel as well. And I'll put Carol's um, YouTube channel in the first comment below and I'll pin it to the top. So with that said, let's get into making our little pendants. Okay, so before you begin, you're going to need to make your base. And you can use poster board if you want, but what I used was the, um, the inside part of these little note cards that I bought from the Dollar Tree. Because I usually buy these note cards to cut out the images on the front. And um, so I just saved this part back here. And then I cut these with my paper cutter into um, little strips. And I cut them, I'll show you. I cut them one inch across by one and a half inches uh, tall. Okay? And I used my paper cutter because I knew if I did this freehand, it would be a disaster. <laughs> so um, the next thing you're going to need is some turbo tacky glue. And it doesn't matter if um, your cards have any kind of sentiments or writing on it like that, because I just use these pieces for the inside. As long as there's white on the front and white on the back part of the pendant, you'll be fine. So I'm just taking a little bit of the Turbo Tacky Glue and putting it on like this. And it's important you, that you use the Turbo Tacky Glue and not the regular Tacky Glue because the Turbo Tacky Glue has more resin in it. So this is going to dry really nice and tough. And you're going to make sure that you're evening this up by doing this, like that. Now you won't believe it, but this will be rock hard by the time we're finished putting everything on here, on this pendant. Now, if you'll notice, I'm using my finger and spreading it out towards the very edges. I'm starting from the middle and just spreading it outwards like this. Okay, it's very, very cold this morning. I can hardly move my fingers. <laughs> Okay. Put a little bit on and spread it like this. So as you can see, each base is going to take four pieces put together like this. Now you're going to press them all down even them up as much as you can and if there's um, 
if it's not perfectly even, um, that don't worry about that. I'll show you how to fix that later. Now this will start to curve like this, and you might even see some separation in the little corners. And that is why you're going to find something really heavy to place this down like this. And I, um, when I did this, um, I probably sat something really heavy on it like this for about, oh, maybe 10 minutes or so. And then um, it dried enough to the point where I could take it off and then just let it dry on its own, and then it dried flat. But um, I'd say 10 to 15 minutes just to be safe. So go ahead and do that. Um, you could use anything as long as it's on a flat surface, and the item that you're using is heavy, uh, like a book, and um, flat. Okay. So go ahead and make your bases, and then I'll show you what else to do. Okay, so I let these little pieces here dry for about, um, oh, four hours or so. And as you can tell, it's already very hard, very tough. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a nail file. And we're just going to kind of smooth the edges down like this. All the way around. And it just kind of evens everything out. gives it a, a very nice look on the side too. Now when you do use this nail file you might notice like a little ridge forming. Just do this you know, outward motions and see comes right off. And you can do that on both sides. that. There we go. And it's cleaning up very nicely. So I think that looks really good. Looks nice all the way around. Okay. So now <clears throat> we're going to make our glitter mix. Now what I like to do first is I like to take a, a Dixie cup and I like to put in all the iridescent glitters first. Now this is iridescent jumbo glitter. I bought this at Walmart. And I'm just going to put a little bit in the bottom of the cup. And I'll show you how much in a minute. Like that. Okay. Then I'm going to take this ultra fine glitter called Glitz. And you can use any type of white iridescent glitter, but I'm just using this one. Pouring some of that in, like that, see? It's not really rocket science, it's just adding all of the iridescent glitters first. This I bought from Walmart, it was really cheap. I think this was two, $2.47, something like that. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in, like that, see? Shake it around. Now this I think is really important because it really does give the uh, pendants a beautiful shine. And this is German glass glitter. It's 70 grit. And a lovely lady by the name of Debbie sells this on eBay. I'll make sure to put Debbie's link in on my blog. And I'll post the link to my blog in the first comment below 
I'll pin it to the top. And if you just click on my blog and then click on the project we're doing, the link will be right there. So um, you'll need some of this. And Debbie goes by Read Read on eBay. You can actually find her shop pretty easily too by going to eBay and typing in the words Real German Glass Glitter and um, it will pop up. Okay, so, um, oh, I don't know why I screwed that cap back on. I was going to put some in here. <laughs> and you use just a small amount. This is probably maybe a fourth of a teaspoon, if that, that I'm putting in there. So now I'm going to close it. All right. So we have all of our iridescent glitter mixed up. So now we're going to start adding the color. Now I found when making these gemstones, it really looks the prettiest by using um, pastel colors or light and bright colors. If you try to start mixing things like um, deep reds or deep, deep purples, it's not going to look very good with the iridescent glitter. I would stick to pastel colors or, um, here's an example of another one. Let me find it. Or light and bright colors like this. Just, uh, I would shy away from the real deep uh, jewel tone colors with the iridescent mix. I'm not saying you can't use it, I'm just saying that um, I found that it doesn't look quite as good as um, using the pastel colors. Alright, so this is a half and half type deal thing. <laughs> and I bought this at Walmart and this side has the pink jumbo glitter and then the light pink. Now I know that I have to use a pretty good amount of this for, for the pink to show up. Um, so I'm just going to put a dab of the pink jumbo glitter in there. And you can use the tinsel glitters too in the uh, pastel colors. I know that Walmart has been bringing in tinsel glitters lately, which is nice to hear. See, it's giving it a little bit of a tint, a pink tint. And just put in a little at a time and um, see how you like it. Kind of give it a shake, see, and I think it's really pretty. So, and I have another pink iridescent glitter, and look at look how much is left. <laughs> so I'm just going to pour some of this into. It's pink, but it's a different shade pastel pink. So I'm gonna mix that up. Isn't that looking pretty? I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of shadowed. Okay. And I showed you how to make that, but I had already made this up previously and saved it in here. So I'm going to just add that. And it's the same mixture that um, I just showed you. It's just that I had some mixed up ahead of time. So I'm going to mix it all together. Very pretty. All right. And if you have any of this left over, um, you know, don't toss it. That's for sure. You can put it in these little storage containers. I bought these at um, the Dollar Tree the other day. And they're very small, but any little excess glitters like this, you can just put in these. And I'm sure you can use them on another project or, uh, you know, maybe if you're making a tag or something like that and you need a little bit of glitter. This would be really pretty. Okay, so I'm using glossy accents and you can buy this at walmart.com, you can buy this at Michael's, um, Joann's. I'm not sure about Hobby Lobby. I really don't uh, make it to Hobby Lobby anymore because it's um, a distance away from me. 
and this is by Ranger. So if you just type in the words Ranger Glossy Accents, um, you should be able to find it. So I'm just going to put some of this on here. and I love this Glossy Accents. It dries very hard, makes a nice... Um, makes a, a really pretty surface once you put it once you give um, this the final coat it's really beautiful and I'll show you that of course towards the end now I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on here I'm not worried about any of the spilling over I give it a little shake now I'm not going to sit there and shake it over and over and over uh, once I turn this upside down I'm just going to turn it over once. That's it. Just once. Okay. And just kind of push in anything on the sides. Okay. Now I'm going to come back in and just give it like a squirt here, squirt there, lines going different directions. And then I'm going to put more. So that's our, our second layer. Okay, turn it over one time, and I'm going to come in with our third layer, lines going here, there, everywhere, and I'm going to shake some more on, like this. Tip it over one time gently. Push in any excess. And if you see anything in the corners that uh, might need some um, some texture, I just pull it upwards like this with a toothpick. Like that. Okay. So we have three layers on here. Now you're going to let this dry for at least 12 hours. And then we're going to come back and give it a fourth and a final layer. Okay, I just want these to dry first. And you'll see how pretty this will look as we go on. And you'll see this transform before your eyes. And it will be beautiful. Okay, so as you can see, it has dried. So now what we're going to do is put another layer on the top. I'm just going to put lines going different directions at the top. And I can kind of move this around by pulling it upwards too, like this. to take my glitter mix and pour this on the top just like so and I'm going to turn it over once okay now that looks pretty good at this point I might want to add maybe a line here or there that you can see that might need a little filling in. But other than that, I think it looks pretty good. Have some on my finger. <laughs> and then turn it over once again. Okay, so now I'm going to allow this to dry for another 12 hours and then I'll come back and we're going to put a final gloss on it and then I'll show you what else. Okay, so as you can see our fourth layer has completely dried. So we're going to take some more of this glossy accents 
and we're going to put this on top as a final layer and just spread it around like so make sure to get the edges and that will be our final coat Now you can certainly use a brush if you'd like to, but I just found that my fingers work just as well. As long as you wipe it off with a uh, baby wipe, I mean wipe your finger off with a baby wipe or something like that right afterwards. Okay, so now we're going to allow this to dry thoroughly. And I'm going to set that aside. Okay, so as you can see, the top coat has dried, so now we're going to flip it over on the back and put a thin coat of glossy accents on that, just to make it waterproof all the way around. Not that I would wear this in a shower or anything, but... <laughs> okay, just going to spread a fairly thin coat from corner to corner. You can use a brush, of course, if you want, but I'm just using my fingers. And then I'm just going to allow this to dry overnight, and this will get extra hard as well. So um, I'm just going to set this aside and allow it to dry. Okay, so as you can see, this is dried on the back. And this has dried on the front as well. It's nice and glossy. Very pretty. So now we're going to take a Krylon 18 karat gold leafing pen and we're going to outline the edges. Now I know that Dollar Tree has the gold paint pens, but you would be better off not using those. They're very dark compared to the Krylon. Um, the Krylon looks more like a, a bright gold color. And you can find this pen by typing in the words <clears throat> Krylon 18 um, Carat Gold Leafing Pen. And you should see several pop up for you. I do know that they have some on eBay as well, but you might be able to find them at a place where you can just pick them up instead of ordering it online. So I'm just going to go slowly around here just like this and you want a little bit of that gold color um, not only on the edges but on the edges of the uh, the um, oh the glitter part just like this not too much but just a little just like that. Alright, so now you don't want to touch this. You want to allow it to dry for as long as you would regular paint. Okay, so I'm just going to lay this down gently and I'm going to allow it to dry and not touch it until it's completely dry. Okay, I'm not too sure what happened but I lost the footage of when I was gluing the bales on here. And all I did was I took a little dot of E6000 and placed it here on my wax paper. And then I picked up the bale and swirled it in the glue. And then I swirled it on the base of the um, bale. And I just placed one here and then I lined up the bottom one right here. And I just turned it over in the front to make sure everything was lined up perfectly. So now it's in the process of drying. You can find these bales on Amazon, eBay, Etsy. Just type in the words glue on bales, B-A-I-L-S, 
and quite a few should pop up for you. Make sure that you type in the word glue on before bales um, because if you don't then not as many will uh, show up. And these are about 15 millimeters tall. The width doesn't matter. As long as you find bales within 15 millimeter to 17 millimeters tall then it should work just fine on this particular um, piece of jewelry that we're making. So now we're going to be making the um, charms for our little pendant necklace. Okay, so as you can see, this is completely dried. And so what I did was I made some acrylic bead charms to put on this. And I use acrylic beads um, for all of these because I want it to be lightweight. This is just a cheap little acrylic bead flower right here. And I'll put the link as to where I purchased this on my blog. Just click on the project and it'll be right there. And these are large acrylic bicones. And I posted this a while back in another one of my videos, but I'll go ahead and repost that link on my blog um, when you click on this project as well. And then we have some resin roses. And um, I haven't decided whether I'm going to turn this into a necklace or a keychain like I did these two. This is one that I made. And the, um, I think it's on here, yeah. The bead cap that I put at the bottom of this teardrop here is also acrylic. So um, I found that on eBay as well. And these lobster clasps, um, these are about 26 or 27 millimeters tall. And I have to get some more gold ones. All the ones I have left now are silver. So. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and put this together. And I'm using a 7mm um, jump ring, and it's from Michaels. You can buy them in packages hanging up for $2.99. And this is the Bead Landing brand, and I like them because even though it doesn't say strong gauge on the package, they are strong gauge. So I really like those jump rings. Okay, so I put that first part on, and then I'm using a six millimeter jump ring. Also a stronger page. And I bought these little daisy spacers at Michael's. They're kind of in between a seven and an eight millimeter. And then I just put a little gold spacer bead on top of that. Do I even have yeah, it's hard to see. this. There we go. Took me a moment or two. So now the last thing is we're going to glue this little resin rose right here in the left hand corner. Okay, for this you're going to need a little bit of E6000 on the back. And then I'm putting just a tiny dot of glue on top of that, just so this will hold, the hot glue will hold this into place while it's drying, while the E6000 is drying. 
and I'm going to put this right here in the left hand corner just like that and I'm going to allow this to dry okay so as you can see I just slipped a piece of strong 1 4th inch wide organza on here I haven't decided yet if I wanted to turn this into a necklace or a lightweight keychain and if I do decide to turn it into a keychain I'm definitely going to have to order some more of these heart lobster clasps in the gold because all I have left is silver but I think these turned out really pretty and it does take a lot of patience as far as the drying time goes but they are so worth it they turn out so beautiful and um, I think that you'll really enjoy this I hope you give this a try and that I've inspired you some and if you have a chance stop by my Facebook page at Happy Birds Glitter Nest I'll make sure to put the um, link in the show more section of this video and uh, I hope to see you there God bless you and take care bye bye